Dust from the Sahara Desert has arrived in the United States. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis back with you. In this video, we're not only going to track the dust, we'll show you the modeling on that, but also the rain that's coming with it, at least developing alongside this dust. And that's what could provide a good chunk of the southeast corner of the U.S., the opportunity for some dirty or muddy rain. We'll break that down coming up over the next couple of minutes. Then we'll take a look at that system that had previously been highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. It now is back to a goose egg percent chance, 0% shot for development. We talked about this yesterday. We're going to break that down. Some impact still coming to the Carolina coast, of course, but certainly the opportunity for any kind of tropical development it has come and gone, and we'll talk about why uh, later on at the end. End of this video if you want to look a little long range we've broken down some of the hype uh, going forward but we'll talk about where we should be expecting maybe some shenanigans with tropical development over the next couple of weeks and towards the end of june so if you're interested in some of the long range stuff stick around for that before we get into the video if you do want to stay updated on all things weather and hurricane season do me a favor hit that subscribe, at least give it a thumbs up if you like the content. And I want to know where you're tuning in from and what the weather is doing, where you are watching from. Post that in the comments. Don't forget your location. Here we go. We've been sitting on this uh, shot here for quite some time. This is the dust. The darker the brown, the thicker the dust in the atmosphere. This hangs out at about 10 to 20,000 feet above our heads. Most of the time, you don't even know it's there. So it's not like the scene from The Mummy where the mummy pops up from the dust and it's this giant dust storm. Not like that at all. Most are, More often than not, it's anticlimactic until you add some rain to it. And we'll get into that in just one second. Western Cuba, we're seeing the thick stuff. Western Bahamas, and then now into South Florida from about Port St. Lucie to Fort Lauderdale and Miami. We do have some thick cloud cover as well, so you may not be able to even tell that this dust is hanging around, but certainly it has arrived and will continue to pinwheel up the Florida Peninsula and then work its way up the southeast corner of the U.S. So here we go for the remainder of Wednesday into Thursday. It starts to lighten up a little bit, the concentration, as it lifts towards Orlando. That's still pretty thick signature here on the dust model. That's 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, and then we're still going to keep some light concentrations of dust through the southeast corner of the United States as we move to the start of the weekend. That system is going to end up pulling some of that dust away. I'll show you that uh, in just one second when we break down the system that's going to skirt by the Carolinas. So this is what I'm talking about, the dust and uh, the dirty rain potential. We'll take you back, especially in Florida. I think that has the best opportunity for that to happen. As we zoom in, again, I have the future radar, the model there, overlaid with the dust, the brown indicates the dust, and then the green and yellow indicate the rain. And as we move through the afternoon, I think we're going to fire up some thunderstorms. There's 5 o'clock on Thursday evening, really, from the southeast corner of Georgia into north-central Florida. That's where we're going to have the opportunity for some dirty rain. And what I mean by that is we, had, we have rain falling through a layer where there's that thick dust from the Sahara Desert. Those raindrops are going to pick up that dust. Well, when the rain falls to the surface, it brings the dust to the surface. Eventually, that raindrop or those raindrops are going to evaporate. And if you go outside, if the dust is thick enough where you're at, you might be able to see little dirt marks. So tomorrow and Friday, if you walk outside and see your porch furniture or maybe your car and you see these little brown specks on it, these random brown dots, that is likely dirt, dust, from the Sahara Desert that has traveled more than 3,000 miles across the Atlantic that was picked up by the rain and dropped to the surface. Now, that can also impact air quality as well when we get some of that dust closer to the surface. The other thing, at least the, the cooler part about the dust, is the sunrises and sunsets. Now, here's the deal with this, although I'm kind of worried about seeing vibrant sunrises and sunsets because we have thick cloud cover around for the most part because of that disturbance that we've been highlighting that's currently over Florida and then moving into the Carolinas. But this is the reason why we're going to get those vibrant sunrises and sunsets if, in fact, we're able to clear our skies enough. So no dust. You have the bright yellow sun, of course. Um, there's more yellow color. There's not as much scattering. And this same goes the deal for the wildfire smoke, especially in the northern tier of the country that you've seen. When you have that particulate matter in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere, the sun's rays are going to hit that, the light's going to hit that, and then scatter. And that's when you get some of those very deep, dark reds out there as well. This is even amplified further 
if the sun is lower on the horizon because uh, during sunset, and that's why it typically happens during sunrise and sunset, because it's passing through more of the atmosphere, so you have even additional scattering. Uh, so all of that combined goes into the vibrant colors that you see in the sky, uh, hoping to at least get a glimpse of that if we can clear our skies. I'm not too optimistic, but I'm telling you there's a chance anyway. Here is that disturbance where we have clouds kind of draped across the Florida Peninsula. We have the heavier rain sliding up through central Florida and then kind of working its way back into Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Uh, this is where our center is, so quasi center. It's really not spinning just yet, but it's closer to Jacksonville. And the one deal with this is now, and we talked about this in yesterday's video if you saw it, we personally thought that this was going to stay on shore, and obviously – for a system to be tropical, it needs to get its strength from the warm water. And if it's not going to interact with the water, it's not going to try to organize any. Uh, so what we have going on here, this is going to be Thursday morning. And you see that counterclockwise motions. So that's going to be pulling in moisture from the Atlantic into Georgia, into the Carolinas. And that is going to bring some scattered downpours, some gusty downpours at that. So again, nothing too crazy, but if you have a beach day plan, Thursday into Friday up the mid-Atlantic coastline, you're going to know it's there. So this is now Thursday afternoon uh, as the system slowly shifts to the north. We still had that onshore flow brought on by that counterclockwise motion around that low pressure. So we're going to, as this moves north, we're going to add more of the outer banks. We're going to add uh, Virginia into this, especially coastal Virginia. And then eventually as we get into uh, Friday, we'll start to see this kick off the coast a little bit we might be able to get some rain if it kicks further inland back towards dc but i really think extreme southeast maryland is the far furthest north that we're going to get any kind of those impacts for as this kind of like works its way back out into the atlantic ocean and then away from the united states again completely missing any kind of um any kind of window to uh develop tropical cyclone potential uh, over the next few weeks it's still going to be in here. For whatever reason, my graphic is not showing the colors that it was just showing, but it's basically down here, Western Caribbean, extreme Southern Bay of Campeche. That's it. And it is that light peach color that's showing up as well. Again, you can't see it on screen. For whatever reason, technology hates me today. Um, but it was popping in the same areas that we've been showing you, the ensembles, lighting up a little bit, showing a small chance, still a better chance over the next couple of weeks for the Central American gyre, that semi-permanent system uh, that hangs out over Central America, to spit out at least one, maybe two more to the Eastern Pacific. And the rule of thumb is when the Eastern Pacific is cranking, it's hard for the Atlantic to do so at the same time because you, you can't have rising motion everywhere. You have to have air rising in one spot, air sinking in another spot to kind of connect that loop in the atmosphere. And that's not what we have. Again, that's a good thing. But I think as we get deeper into June, mid to late June, that second to third week to coincide with that MJO pulse we advertised uh, a couple of weeks ago, that's the more likely scenario for, if you can see my mouse, um, it's in this area, Bay of Campeche, and then extreme western caribbean that is where um the climate prediction center anyway believes that there is a greater than 20 percent shot for some tropical development in the long range we're going to keep an eye on that as we go forward again not to hype again when we talk about long range stuff it's just to kind of give you a heads up it's kind of for forecast verification purposes it's to look at the science into the meteorology i think that's important i do like looking long range we're not going to sound alarm bells by any means but we're going to look at some of the ingredients that are there for sure as we go forward and i'll tell you as we get into the first week of july and beyond i do think we're going to shut things down real quick for a little bit of time and uh, that's because we're going to be on the good side of the mjo the sinking air side of the mjo and that means that we are going to be beneficiaries of limited thunderstorm development i think for the first couple of weeks of july we might be to talk if we miss out on this little on this spot here on that third to fourth week of june we might go a good chunk of july without seeing anything as well and we might be talking about something not happening until august i'm down for that I don't know about you. All righty, guys. So there's a little bit on the Saharan dust. Go tell your friends. Uh, if you see the vibrant sunrises and sunsets, 
where you heard it from. Share that science out there. Uh, we need that these days for sure. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, post in the comments where you're tuning in from, and we will catch you next time.